Somebody say he's here right now. I said, look at somebody and say he's here right now. And if he's here, that means he's in your home right now. I'm Bishop Greg Davis, and somebody clap your hands and say, let the healing begin. Come on, give him praise in this place. It's Monday night, but I hear I hear Sunday night worship in the house. Shout in here. Yeah. Look at somebody and tell them you in the right place at the right time for the right blessing. The right miracle, the right healing, the right deliverance. Tell him you're just in the right place. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Raise up. That's what we're going to do tonight. You coming out of every situation, every circumstances, every pit, the blood of Jesus. God is pulling you out of every circumstances. And I decree and declare to let the healing begin right now. Somebody wrap back and holler. Hallelujah. Welcome to Let the Healing Begin and welcome to the Word Network. I'm Bishop Greg David. No, you have not turned to the wrong station. I am back at home. Amen. Somebody click your heels and say there's no place like home. Five and a half years ago, but I'm back now, and thank God on Mondays, every third Monday, we're going to be decreeing and declare the healing will begin in your life. Call somebody right now and tell them to turn to the Word Network right now. I want you to put your hands together for Mr. Kevin Adele. Come on. Come on. He is, he is the CEO of the Word Network. 90 million homes, 200 countries. Amen. I stood. I stood. Amen. I stood nine years ago, amen, on a Friday night, declaring to rejoice in the word. But tonight, I'm standing, tonight on a Monday night, saying, let the healing begin. I want you to call somebody and tell them, thank all of you that are here tonight in the audience. Put God, put your hands together for the audience tonight. Give, give your neighbor a hand. There is a number on the screen and we are here to pray for you right now men and women of god are here to pray for you 855-730-WORD 855-730-WORD celebrating with me tonight the one and only my father and i'll say more about him bishop paul morton everybody he's in the house y'all can do better than that dr craig oliver dr cindy trim jonathan nelson and as you just heard, Stephanie Pride, everybody, come on. Listen, I, I want to share with you, I want to share with you right quick. I just want to share with you a testimony uh, about uh, the 15th of January. I was in a service in Fort Lauderdale, and the man of God was about to raise a seed. And he said, I want you to get a seed of $57. And I wrote on the back, Pastor David Johnson, I wrote on the back of the envelope, and this was my prayer, January 15th. I said, I want to go back home to the Word Network. Not y'all, y'all, y'all not understanding. You're not really hearing me. I wasn't asking for something that had already been discussed or had already manifested. Y'all ain't saying nothing. My prayer, as I as I sowed the seed of $57, a seed of grace and a seed of completion, because before you go anywhere, you got to complete some other things. And so I sowed the seed that night, and I, and, I, and I laid it on the altar, and I believed God that I was going back. Well, 30 days later, I'm standing right here. There was no telephone call. Two weeks later, y'all ain't saying nothing. I need to make an announcement. God is about to do some stuff quick. He's about to do some stuff in a hurry. He's going to turn some stuff. Get ready to answer your phone. Because God is getting ready to stick you where you've never been to get what you never had. Hey! He's about to give you what you never had to get where you... He's about to introduce you to some folk that you didn't even know that had you on their mind. And so tonight, somebody touch your neighbor. Sit on down, y'all. We're going to get up three, three more times. Look at somebody say, we're going to praise God for the victory tonight. Because look at somebody say, what he did for Bishop, he can do the same thing for you. Listen, 
What is it that you're asking God for tonight? Those of you that are watching across this world, what is it that you're asking God for tonight? We want to touch and agree with you tonight. All you have to do is pick up the phone and dial 855-730-WORD. What is it? Is it a family member? Here's what the Lord gave me as I was getting ready tonight. God said he's about to give you the Lord's release found in Deuteronomy, the 15th chapter. It is the season of the Lord's release. He's about to release you from debt. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He's about to release you from situations that you've been crying over. He's about to release you from situations that you've been depressed. I ain't got no church in here. He's about to release you from that, that one room that you've been living in. I came to announce in here, whatever you've been sowing in tears, God is about to cause you to reap in joy. Touch three people and say, everything on this road is about to get released. Touch them, say release, release. Those of you that are at home, just jump up right now and say, I declare and decree, release in my house. Man of God, God's about to release that ministry. Yeah, I feel it. Hey, hey, sit down, y'all. I, I, God's getting ready to release that ministry that you've been praying for into your hand. That building you've been praying for. I'm talking to some pastors tonight. God is about to send a release tonight. Lift your hands and shout release now. Listen, I want you to dial 855-730-WORD. I want you to do, Sister Stephanie is coming back. I want you to do the same thing that I did. I want you to attach a seed. And, and I, I know you're saying, you just came on. You don't understand. Nobody had preached when I gave that offering. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Nobody had did anything. I applied my faith to what the God was about to say. Tonight, I want you to dial 855-730-WORD. I want you to sow a seed of $57. There is 100 of you tonight. God told me that you need a release in your life. You need a release in your family. You need a release with your children. You need a release on your job. You need a release in your ministry. You need a release in your anointing. You need a release in your career. You need a release in your school. Your, your child right now is wondering how they're going to go through the next semester. I need somebody to lift your hands and shout, release. What is five? Five is the number of grace. Seven is the number of completion. God's going to give you the grace to shut one door. Y'all ain't saying nothing. And he's about to open doors that know. And God said, I'm going to do it quickly. One thing after another is about to happen. So I speak release on you right now. 855-730-WORD. Pick up the phone right now. So that $57. God told me that there's 100 of you. I want to call your name out tonight. And we want to agree in this studio as my, as my bishop preaches tonight. As the men and women of God go forth, we're believing God for your release. Stephanie is coming. Stephanie J. Pride is coming. And the praise team, you are my strength. Give God praise for them right now. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands like this. We're going to make a declaration tonight.
for Stephanie J. Pride. Make sure you go and download her music. Go to iTunes. But just lift your hands right before you sit down. Come on, just worship him. Come on, just worship him. You lift me up. You lift me up. Come on, say it. Come on. Yes, you do, Lord. You lift me up. Those of you at home, just worship. I told you it's release. You lift me up. Hold on. Raise you lift me up. Now just worship him with your mouth right quick, everybody. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Ring, glory, ring, glory. Those of you at home, do it right now. Hallelujah. You are my joy. Thank you for Thank the release Father. of your strength tonight, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for release. Open the windows of heaven. Thank you for release. Now clap your hands and give him praise, everybody. You're watching Let the Healing Begin. I'm Bishop Greg Davis. You may be seated, and it's good to be, be back home at the Word Network. Again, 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. Tonight is a night of release in every area of your life. God is going to do it. I want you to attach that seat of $57 tonight. Uh, tonight, I believe God is going to release, just like he did for me in literally 30 days, because I made my request known. Tonight, I am honored tonight on the first program back home to have a man that literally changed my life over 23 years ago. And I, I don't say that lightly. Changed my life, and uh, I'll never be the same because I met this man. I'll never forget. Picked him up in, at the airport, thought I was doing something. Picked him up in a little raggedy David Johnson 190 a Mercedes that was probably seven, eight years old. I thought I was doing something. And uh, from that ride, my life has never been the same. The Bible says one man plants. That was my grandfather. Another waters. That's this man that's here tonight. I am so honored. He has prayed me through many, many bad choices in my life. And let me say it again. Y'all ain't saying that because y'all can't be transparent. He has prayed me through many bad choices in my life. But he's never thrown me away. He's loved me through it. He's had, me, he's had me do some assignments and tell me to go back to change it around. And uh, I did it in love. And one thing I can say, I'm not trying to brag on myself. There's not one time that I've dishonored him. I want everybody across this world. He is the, he is the senior pastor of the Changing Generation Full Gospel Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia. He is the co-pastor of the Greater St. Stephen Full Gospel Baptist Church in New Orleans, Louisiana. He is the founder of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. But I can say this. Only about a hundred of, of us can say this. He is my spiritual father in whom I'm well pleased. Everybody in this studio stand and welcome to my first program, my first guest, 
Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton Sr. My daddy. Amen. Welcome, sir. It's so good to have you. It is good to be here. Welcome home to the Word Network. You My prayed me God. home. You prayed me home. Yes, yes, yes. And you just you just look so natural here. Thank you, And so I much. tell you, this is a great start. Let the healing begin. I feel the healing. It's going on right now. Yes, sir. Yes. And, and you know, I want to mention that because I want to mention some facets of your life. But you, you yourself went through... Uh, about with cancer and it, it was because of early detection and I know a lot of people know the story but I just I want to I want to help somebody's faith tonight that might be in the heat of their healing right now well you know I definitely know that God is a healer I know that he's a healer and it was just amazing to me because Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans in 2005. I thought that was the most devastating experience in my life. And I spoke that God would bring us through that. And he made me a promise. He said, I'm going to make your ladder greater than your former. So I, I, was, I, was, I was living off of that. And then in 2006, I just go for a colonoscopy. And the doctor tells me, I'm sorry, we found cancer in you. Wow, that was from 2005 to 2006. What is the devil doing? But let me tell you, my faith was so strong because <laughs> what you always have to do, you have to stand on the promises of God. When you stand on the promises of God, because that's what I stood on. He said, I'm going to make your ladder greater than your former. Well, I knew that that didn't include cancer for me. Uh, because I knew if I was going to let my ladder be greater than my former, I had to be busy. So I just couldn't be going for chemo and doing this and that. So I spoke healing. And guess what? That was 2006. And I'm still cancer free. Somebody give God praise for it right in here. And if he did it for him, he can do it for you right now sitting at home. Bishop, you've been through many battles. Uh, Katrina, uh, your, your cancer, you lost your grandbaby. You lost just about everything you had, church locations. What is it that kept you going? What kept me going is my belief in God. Yeah. Knowing, I mean really knowing uh, you know, you can preach it, you can teach it, but until you start living it, that God is able. And I stood on that word, and my God shall supply all my needs. My God shall supply all my needs. And guess what happened? Every time I turn around, he was supplying my need. If I needed healing, whatever I need, through difficult times, he was there for me. People have to learn how to trust God. The Bible says the reason why we don't get what we're supposed to get is because we waver in our faith. And that's what the devil does. He brings distractions to make you waver in your faith. But if you stand strong on what you believe and who you believe in, I am telling you, this is the season for healing, for deliverance. I'm telling you, this is it. This is it. Just believe. Now, you, you, you just went through your own release, but you, you did it yourself. And what I mean by that, you're now the founder of Full Gospel. We have presiding Bishop, Bishop Joseph Warren Walker and the third but you you planned moving out of the way who who does that what 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 man of god that started something himself usually they die away talk about being in tune that's right talk about being in tune with the spirit at the right time and making the right moves you seem to be somebody that hears from god and sometimes we got to scratch our head what is he doing now because we don't sometimes <laughs> sometimes we're like what is he doing but you and i've learned that from you to leave on top and leave the right way. Because if you leave the right way, you can always come back the right way. So talk about, talk about somebody's watching right now, a pastor, a, a, a business person, a entrepreneur. They're trying to figure out how to make the right move. How have you heard from God in the right seasons to make those moves? And did you ever question it? I've never had to question God in my later years, now in the earlier years when you were really trying to learn him, 
I'm talking about uh, 30 years ago, you're really, really trying to learn him. But once you really know his voice, the problem with a whole lot of people, they act like they know his voice. You can't fool me as it relates to his voice. I have my son, my, my nephew sometime, and they will play and act like, you know, they're somebody else. But I know their voice because that's family. When you know the voice, Satan can't fool me with his voice. I know God's voice. So I believe that we have to learn how to go to the next level in our lives. My goal now is to teach even pastors that retirement is not a curse. I, I'm trying to let people see the new face of retirement because I'm still a kingdom representative. And, yes. and, and, and I believe that that's important. I learned a real lesson from one of my grandchildren and he was about three years old and I had some grandchildren that were older than him and they were out playing basketball, basketball, and as they were playing basketball, uh, you know, they would just ignore. Uh, you know, the youngest grandchild, they wouldn't give him the ball. I said, give him the ball, give him the ball, let him participate. Well, when they gave him the ball, he wouldn't let go of the ball. He just kept saying, my ball, my ball. He wasn't giving that That's ball good. up for nobody. And so I had to tell him, no, if you're going to stay in the game, you got to pass the ball. I decided I wasn't like going to act. I like it. <laughs> I decided I wasn't going to act like a three-year-old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to learn how to pass the ball. Yeah. I, I learned how to pass the ball. And when you learn how to pass the ball, that's where the victory is. That's why I'm still in the game. Yeah, yeah. Tell somebody to pass the ball. <laughs> you got to know when to pass. So, so in passing the ball and, and now your, your retirement, what does the next phase of your life look like? Everybody asks me across the country, is he, is he still around? What is he doing? What, what is he doing? So we won't tell everybody at one time. What are you doing now? Well, I'm enjoying what I'm doing now. Of course, after Hurricane Katrina in Greater St. Stephen, 75 years old um, in New Orleans. Uh, but our ministry in Atlanta is just 10 years old. I'm working on giving another a few years until 2020 to really get that established like I really, really want so that they can really understand. So I'm 65 now, so I'm going to retire from pastoring at 70 years old. But my goal is even to mentor pastors on longevity. Too many pastors want it right now, and they think that you got to get it right now. But there's a process that you go through. Many see your finished product, but they don't know what you had to go through to get to where you got to. So I thank God for favor because with the favor, I believe people, pastors, listen to me. And so I think that's, that's a great advantage because I really want to be able to speak to pastors and let them know how important it is. And let me holler out, I got to do that to my presiding bishop, Bishop Joseph W. Walker. He told me he's going to be watching tonight. Love my new presiding bishop. He's going to be with me in April, too. The whole new cabinet is coming to be with awesome. me. I want you to take the camera and I want you to speak to a, a young pastor who is trying to make a decision, trying to trust God, but comfortable need to go to that next level, but comfortable where they're at, but afraid to make that next step. And what I've known about you, you've never made it about the money. You've never made decisions based upon the money. I want you to speak to a young pastor or even a pastor that's watching. You're gonna, he's going to preach later on, y'all. That's why I'm, I'm kind of holding him down, but he's going to preach to us at the end. But I want you to speak to that pastor as a father, as you speak to us every month. Pastor, I would just like to say to you right now, you've got to ask yourself, first of all, what is the motive? Why do I want to do this? Do I want to do it for popularity? Do I want to do it for the money? Do I want to do it just for a big church? If that's your motive, it's the wrong motive. It has to be about meeting the needs. Ministry is about meeting the needs of people. When you have a passion and your heart is for people, I heard Dr. Craig Oliver, overseer of our pastors, and is doing an awesome job, who just stated the other day, if you are a real shepherd, you ought to smell like sheep. Not above your sheep where they keep you from the sheep, but I want to be right in there with the sheep. 
that's where your success comes from. Don't play with people's souls. Study to show yourself approved. Not only study, but live the life you preach about so that somebody will see that there is something different in your life. And I'm telling you, if you have the right motive, the right attitude, the right character, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. It has not even entered into your imagination what God has for you. Bishop Paul S. Morton. Come on, y'all give it up for him. You're going to come back and preach to us only like you can. You all stay tuned. 855-730-WORD. Sow that seed of $57. Somebody shout release. And Jonathan Nelson is here with me tonight. He's our guest tonight all the way from Florida. And this is what's getting ready to happen in your life. Anything can happen from here. Give God praise for him right quick. If you believe that anything can happen in your life, just declare, say anything can happen, anything can happen. Just decree and declare over your neighbor, say something good is happening to you right now.
season. The heavens are open over this place and over your home. Because it's time for your breakthrough. Somebody ought to say breakthrough. Somebody shout anything. Look at three people and tell them anything. Tell them anything. Tell them anything. He can turn it around, say anything. Your faith ain't big enough. Tell somebody, look again. Look at somebody, say anything can happen from here. Hey, hey. I decree and declare that anything can happen. Whatever you're going through, God's about to turn it around. Every circumstances, every situation, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Shake your neighbor and say, anything, anything is possible if you just believe. Oh, now let me ask you a question. Jonathan said, he said, you're, you're just one praise away from your breakthrough. So let me see how you're going to praise him for the breakthrough when I count the three. Open your mouth and give him a shout. Those of you at home, praise him on your bed. Clap your hands and praise him. Yeah! Oh! Here's, here's what I want you to do. See, here's the issue. The issue is you talking about the problem too much. Look at somebody and say, talk about it later. But shout about it now. Y'all, y'all didn't y'all say talk about it later. But shout about it now. So don't wait till the battle's over. Shout, scream, holler. Look at somebody say neighbor. Talk about it later. Talk about your sickness later. But shout about your healing. Talk about your broke days later. But shout about your prosperity. Somebody, anybody, scream. Sit down. Did you hear what I just said? Look at somebody one more time. Say, I'm tired of you talking about it. Talk about it later. Dance about it now. Talk about it later. Praise about it now. All right, I ain't gonna force you. Sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down. Sit, sit down, no. Sit down, son. Y'all sit down, sit down, tab. Stop talking about it. Shout about it. Scream about it. Run about it. Dance about it. Cause it's already. I'm gonna get my first one in, is it okay? Hey! Look at one more verse, I said, neighbor, did you hear what I said? Stop talking about it, shout about it. Go back home and tell the devil I'm back. I'm tired of talking, I'm ready to shout about it. Praise him about it. Praise him about it. Praise him. Put them hands together right now all over the country. Come on, 30 seconds. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 
God's releasing you right now into your future. He's releasing you into your purpose. He's releasing you into your destiny. Sow that seed right now of $57. Somebody lift your voice and holler! Sit down. What you gonna do? Talk about it later. And what you gonna do? Shout about it now. Tell somebody, I ain't talking about it nobody no more. Ain't no need to worry what the night's gonna bring. It'll be all over. Pass the bowl in the morning. All right, clap your hands for Jonathan Nelson. Go download his music. Anything can happen from here. Anything can, ha I'm a witness. Who would have thought? I, who would have thunk it? I'm sitting right back in the Word Network. Give God praise for anything. Talk about it later. Shout about it now. He is the pastor of the Elizabeth Baptist Church in Atlanta, Georgia. My first encounter with Dr. Craig Oliver was watching him on the Word Network. I'm like, who is that? That dude is, I mean, he can, he can go. And a great work. There, he has several locations. I, he don't even say the number of them because they multiple locations. I think that's when you get past two or three. We're going to talk about it. But he is now the uh, newly uh, uh, appointed and newly uh, installed general overseer of our pastors of the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Put your hands together now for my friend and brother, Dr. Greg Oliver Sr. You was kind of hollering at me. I think you ready to preach. Absolutely. Yeah. Healing is in this place tonight. Yes, I'm sir. excited about being a part of it. I'm excited to have you on our inaugural show. And, and I don't think you even knew that. My first encounter was watching you on television. There's power in television. I absolutely had no idea whatsoever. Yeah. But I'm excited about what God is doing, even through you. Thank excited you, Excited about your being back again with the Word Network. And God has an amazing assignment and work for you to carry out. And I'm excited that you would allow me to share with you on you know, this you, very sir. first uh, inaugural service. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we congratulate you. Give God praise for him one more time. Our new overseer, leading pastors all over the, all over the world through the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship. Talk about, for those that may have never seen you, never heard of you, talk about Craig Oliver. Wow, Craig Oliver, senior pastor of the Elizabeth Baptist Church, has served there for now 20 years and had uh, the privilege of starting there at the age of 21. And um, beyond that, uh, the pastoring aspect, let me first of all start and say that Craig Oliver is a husband married to Cleo, father of three, and just excited about uh, the family that God has blessed me uh, to lead and to be a part of. And even beyond that, uh, as it relates to the church, uh, as you've stated, it is a church with multiple sites. We're up to five different locations. And uh, See, we I have- I told y'all when you get past two or three, they say multiple <laughs> sites. Yeah. And so we have a uh, Saturday, morning after uh, Saturday morning service and a total of 10 services over the weekend. Wow. Yes, so do you do all of them? No. Okay. All right. I do a total of about five on a Sunday and the balance of those services, we spread it out among our ministers Amen. and other preachers. Congratulations to you, sir. God well, thank you. Things. Now talk about the journey. Uh, tonight seems like we keep going to the, the theme of helping pastors tonight that are watching. My heart is for the young preacher. I do a post every day to the young preacher. This is my 30th year of preaching, but I, I want to ask you, uh, as you look out at the young preachers, uh, how do you feel at this point in your life that you really can help them? You've been assigned over pastors in our um, fellowship. So what do you feel God is saying to you for pastors? Wow. You know, it's amazing how God has allowed this opportunity to be presented in my life. Uh, as stated again, started uh, at a very young age, actually started preaching at the age of 15 started pastoring again at the age of 21. And through that experience, uh, there has been so many positive, so many uh, amazing things that I've had the joy to, uh, to experience, but also some challenges as well. And I think really the heart of a pastor is shaped not just through the good, but also th through the bad. Uh, my dear friend, uh, Dr. Sam Chan has a book out that is entitled, uh, The Whole Value of Pain, and how pain is so instrumental in the life of a leader. It is through the process of pain that we're able to 
see character with, through the process of pain that our faith begins to emerge. It is through the process of pain that we really begin to learn more about God. It's interesting how Paul makes mention of how it was through pain that he discovered his necessity of, lead, of leading his life to Christ and even beyond that, leaning upon Christ for his power. What is the greatest pain in the last 20 years that you got your face that you have ever faced in ministry? That you, it just comes to mind. Wow, the greatest pain. That you just felt like, you know, I just, I might walk away from this. Have you ever had that moment? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, to be quite candid and transparent, it was the uh, year that I went through a divorce. I uh, literally mm -hmm. thought my life was over, thought my ministry was over. It was such a dark sp spirit over my life and a season in my life that I literally had suicidal thoughts. Never would forget a statement that one of my professors in a class uh, made um, that death or suicide is always a permanent decision to a temporary problem. Wow. And so when That's he made good. that statement, I never thought that I would have to refer back to that comment. We, we got a few minutes. I want you to say that again. Say yeah. it slowly. We got a few minutes. Go ahead. Absolutely. So suicide is always a permanent decision to a temporary problem. Wow. Yeah. Whatever you're dealing with is temporary. Yeah. It matters not how difficult it may appear to be, how heavy the lo load may be. At the end of the day, it is temporary. But suicide, that's a permanent decision. Those who have successfully pulled that off has not come back to relive. Yeah. And so that particular, oh no, 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 that particular comment stuck with me. And I thank God for how God is able to bring things back to your remembrance. And that is what really got me through that dark season in my life. Now, you, you touched on something because the name of the show is Let the Healing Begin. Yeah. And uh, I, I just felt as I was getting ready for this show over the last week or so, and I didn't know who it would be. I, I, I felt that spirit of suicide, even to talk to yeah. pastors. We've lost so many pastors and leaders. I, I want you to take that camera and I want you to talk to pastors who may have me be facing divorce right now where people don't understand there's a death that occurs because I've been there I've been there publicly Absolutely. right in front of the cameras and so I want you to talk to a pastor right now because they're dealing with it they're sitting there right now and you could be the one tonight with that word that could save their life absolutely the reality of life is simply this here that life can take you through so many different twists and turns scripture is ever so true that life has a way of bringing us into the very shadows of death and at that very moment is when Satan begins to make various suggestions that your life is not worth living, that your ministry is not valuable, and that even beyond that, that God cannot even use you. But every statement of the devil is designed to discourage you, yeah. to cause suppression to take over you, because ultimately what the devil really wants to do is to derail you so that he can kill you. But I've come to declare life over you even now that the very Christ that you serve, the very Christ that you preached about, the very Christ that you've labored for, he has come to grant you life and not just life, but he's come to give it to you more abundantly. And even beyond that, what God has in store for you is greater than all of the pain that you have ever endured. The reality is simply this, that as you go through ministry, ministry brings its share of misery. Consider Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19. The Bible makes mention of how he ran for his life, went under a juniper tree, and he said to God, I've had enough. Take my life from me. The reality is simply this, is that Elijah lost a sense of vision because he focused more on his adversary that it eclipsed his view of the Almighty. He looked more at Jezebel, the personification of hell in and of itself, and he lost sight of Jehovah. And whatever you do, my friend, Keep your eyes on God, the source of life, the source of hope, the source of your joy, the source of your peace, and ultimately, he is the source of your victory and of your healing. I speak life over you even now. As you were speaking, I literally saw a dark cloud just passing over somebody's house right yeah. now. You're watching in there, tears coming down your eyes right now as he was talking. At the other end of that phone that's sitting right next to you, I want you to pick up the phone right now. I want you to believe God for the release of your joy. Your joy is coming back right now. 
I decree and declare joy is coming back in your life right now. Pick up the phone, 855-730-WORD. Share with us, um, Dr. Share with us what's going on as far as leadership with the pastors, how pastors can contact you, and even how they can connect. Well, let me first of all start by stating that one of the best ways you can make contact is to be a part of the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship, in which I provide leadership over the pastor's division. I cannot begin to state how excited I am over the privilege and the honor in serving in that particular capacity. I thank God for our presiding bishop. I thank God for our founder. Can't wait to hear from him tonight. But that is one of the ways because I really genuinely have a heart for pastors. I believe that if the local church is gonna grow, it requires that pastors grow. That means that we must grow spiritually, intellectually, and in all forms of growth. So I wanna challenge you to be a part of the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship. And here it is. It is not just for those who are part of the Full Gospel Baptist Fellowship. Any pastor can be a part of this experience because our goal is to help you to grow and not only grow, but to become all that God has destined you to be. I'm excited about what God is doing for you. Before we go, the word for tonight is release. When you hear that and heard what I mentioned about the seed, I want you to encourage the people. How how do we connect the seed to a need, Dr. Oliver? Absolutely. The reality is simply this year that as you go through the process of making that connection, it is ever so critical that you ask God to purpose in your heart that in which God would have you to be a part of. And so the reality is simply this. If you're seeking for a release in your life, if you're seeking for a blessing in your life, oftentimes God is going to test your faith and put you in a setting that sees how serious you are regarding that need. Need denotes desperation. And if there is desperation, the question then is, how far are you willing to go to sow that seed to have that release in your life? So I wanna challenge you to be obedient to God I want to challenge you to step out in faith. I want to challenge you to trust God and see how God is going to bless you as a result of your obedience. Give God praise for Dr. Craig Oliver. Give us the website where they can reach you or even follow you. Absolutely. And so you can reach us or follow us on the website, elizabethbaptistchurch.org. And even on that particular website, you can find out an array of different offerings that we have there at the Elizabeth Baptist Church. So I look forward to your following us there at EBC, elizabethbaptistchurch.org. Give God praise for him one more time. Thank you, my brother. I love you. you. Thank you for sharing on my first show back. Thank you. you. Y'all can do better than that for Dr. Craig Oliver Sr. I need you to pick up the phone because I want want to touch and agree with you at the end of the program. I need you to put your name on the altar tonight. This is an altar. And no matter whether you're in the studio or wherever you are, I want you to sow that seed of $57. 50 is the number of grace, 7 being the number of completion. God's going to give you the grace to finish some things in your life. He's going to release you into your new season tonight. 100 of you. The Lord spoke to me and said there would be 100 of you that would sow this $57. Do it tonight. 855-730-WORD. We have an array of pastors in the house, but two particularly are here. We call them Spotlight Pastors. I want you to take uh, take a look at our spotlight pastor, Dr. Dana, Pastor Dana Berry. Take it away. God bless you. So glad to have with us today, Pastor O.C. Tab and Pastor Rochelle White. We are so delighted that you joined us for this night of healing. And so I want to ask you, Pastor, what is the name of your church? Where can we find you? Worship Church, one church, two locations. Uh, here in the city of Detroit, we have a Bel Air campus location, which is at Bel Air Movie Theater. And uh, we also have a Beth Eden campus, which is at Gresh and St. Patrick. Now, you said you have a theater location. Yes. What, what made you do that? Needed the space. Um, the Lord actually led me there. Um, we had left from uh, another situation, and uh, the Lord literally led me to the movie theater. I went unexpectedly and met with the owner of the movie theater, and uh, he asked me how much I could afford. I told him, he told me, go write the contract, and two hours later, the contract was signed. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And so as you, um, being a pastor, how do you feel um, the importance of a pastor being in the community? How important is that to you? I I think that that, um, the church has a responsibility uh, that to be more than something that simply consumes space. Mm-hmm. I think that the church is placed in the community to impact the community and to make a difference. 
And I think that uh, especially in this season and time in which we live, it's really, really necessary for the church to step up because people are hurting, uh, people feel forgotten, uh, they feel let down. And I just believe that the church is in a wonderful position for such a great revival, uh, which I believe is in store next for us. Awesome. And so as we continue to talk about encouraging the pastor, encouraging the preacher, encouraging the one who has to carry this vision that God has given, what would you say to that person that's watching today who uh, may feel like they don't want to do this anymore? Yeah, preaching 31 years, pastoring 25 years. Um, the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong. That's good. But to the one that hangs on in there. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage some pastor out there, uh, though it may seem as though uh, you're not making a difference. One life, you can change one life that can make the difference in so many other lives. So I encourage you, brother. I encourage you, sister. Uh, keep the faith. Don't give up on God. Make God a priority, and he'll continue to make you a priority. Invite someone to your church. Certainly, we invite you to come and worship with us at worship, to come and experience the love and love the experience. Uh, we can be reached at www.worshipdtw. That's Worship DTW Worship Church. We're doing the work, we're discipling the world, and we're delivering the word. We'd love to have you as our guest. Thank you. Pastor Rochelle White, what's the name of your church? New Beginnings Bible Church right here in Detroit, Michigan. And you, where are you located? We're located at 11905 Grand River Avenue in Wyoming. And so you are a female pastor. Really? <laughs> yes. And so what do you say to other female pastors who are um, taking this walk of faith and believing God? What, what, what would you say to them on today? To a female pastor, I would say be secure in who you are. Uh, execute your assignment. Never use the pulpit as a platform to promote your gender or your agenda, but do your assignment and God will get the glory out of it. And so as we look at the community, as I asked Pastor Tab, how important is the community to you? Uh, the community is very important to me right now. Uh, when you look at according to the Bible, when Jesus said, listen, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And they said, when did we do this? And he said, when you did it to the least of those. And so the church is important in this hour to go and impact the community because there are so many negative things that people are saying about the church, but I remember the church where I grew up when they were taking groceries to other people's houses and paying people's bills. And so uh, the community is important to the church and we want to keep doing that. So I want you to invite someone to your church. Come to our church, New Beginnings Bible Church, where you can begin again, 11905 Grand River Avenue, Detroit, Michigan. We'd love to see you there. Thank you so much for coming today. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Dana. Give God praise for our pastors that are here. Y'all can do better than that. Not only are they here, but we have pastors from out of town. Thank God. All the pastors in the house, just stand, just stand. All of the pastors. Come on, clap your hands. Pastor Bolden, Pastor Hopkins, Fry, Pastor Lynch, amen, Pastor David Johnson, and my sister is all the way here from Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. You know her on the Word Network. Dr. Prophetess Takeda Williams is in the house. She going to say hello before it's over. She drove all the way down to be with me. Thank you so much. Woman of God is here tonight, and uh, she's. it's very appropriate for her to be here for the beginning of my, my destiny back with the Word Network. She's spoken into my life many a times. She's a woman of wisdom. She is a woman, I, I don't know why I'm using this word, precision. She's like a, a surgeon that can go in and just precisely go in and take out some things and, and then sew you back up again. She many times has been on my radio show. She's been here with me before. She's an author. She's a preacher. She's a politician. Most of all, she's a gospel preacher, and she will. Now, don't, don't let her sitting here uh, being prissy make you fool you because she is a stomp-down preacher and will tune up. Put your hands together for Dr. Cindy Trim. My sister, welcome. Thank you for having me. I think they needed to know that because they always see you teaching and motivating and stuff, but you can go at it. I can. You can. <laughs> she can. Welcome, and I, I certainly appreciate you sharing on this first night. Thank you so much for having me. It's just been a night of empowerment, and the anointing of God is tangible here. 
I was sitting there listening to all of the ministers that went before me, the powerful men of God. But there's something very real about tonight. That word release, yeah. that, that's something that we haven't heard for a long time. It's not about what you do, but what God is doing for you. And if you, if you just allow God to do what he needs to do in your life, you'll see a lot of not only breakthroughs, but releasing. You'll be released from debt and released from hurt and released from bondage. And your children are going to be released. Your sons are going to be released from prison. And they're going to come out preaching. And your daughters are going to be re released from rebellion. I believe that this is a season of release. Yeah. You have a book. It's called The Rules of Engagement for Overcoming the Past. Yeah. Isn't it true before we can walk into our release, we have to overcome some yeah. things of the past? Absolutely. Um, a lot of us abound. We talk about soul ties, and we don't realize how deep it is because usually we think of soul ties as attached to a person. But we can, we can be uh, have soul ties to a thing or a situation or even a past experience where our souls need to be released and we need to find freedom. And uh, a lot of things that happen to us, we replay it in our mind. And it becomes cyclic because we attract not what we want, but who we are. And there's a scripture that God gave me that he's going to multiply us a thousand times more, even as we are, not as we have. And if we, if we have healthy thoughts and if we just meditate on the word of God concerning healing, deliverance, we will literally see those things beginning to manifest in our lives. A lot of people decree and they declare, and that's what they do verbally, but that internal dialogue, yeah. we need to bring that back into alignment. And we need to begin to meditate on God's word day and night and make it a lifestyle. A lot of people look at Christianity as a religion, but Christianity for me is my life strategy. And our, our lives are really going wrong because we have the wrong strategies. And in order to fix our lives, we got to be able to fix the strategy. And the Bible is a book of strategy, you know, and we're trying to figure out how do we do this thing called life. And it's trial and error for most of us, but it doesn't have to be because what we need is hidden in that word, the word of God. In order to fix our lives, we have to fix our strategies. We got to fix our strategies. I we caught got, that. Yeah, and we got to fix our mindsets. You know, a lot of people ask, well, when, when, when should I have change my strategy? When your strategy no longer works, you need a new strategy. And I believe that this is a season That's that, good. That, that God is going to give us strategy. Strategies is attached to an outcome. And um, if you keep getting things that you don't want, you don't have to curse that. You just have to change your strategy. And, you know, you look through the whole Bible. I mean, God gave uh, Noah a strategy for his family to survive the tsunami. God gave uh, Esther a strategy to deliver her people. Uh, God gave Naaman a strategy for healing. And so there's a strategy for everything. And once you apply it by faith, because God is going to give it to you, and he'll give it to you on a daily basis. And that's what prayer is all about. Prayer is not just you talking to God, but God talking to you. What, what, what stuck out about this book is that you say rules of engagement. And I know you, you're very intentional. Mm -hmm. uh, engagement means that you have to be involved with what you're doing. So the rules of engagement, what, what are some of the rules of engagement of overcoming your past? Number one, forgiveness. That's the big thing. That's releasing people. When you have unforgiveness, it's like drinking acid, wishing your enemy will die. So you, forgiveness is, is not about uh, releasing a person or absolving them of something that they've done to you. It's about you releasing your soul from them so you can go on and live liberated and free of the burdens that come along with the pain. The other thing... Let, let me ask you, this. does it make a difference whether they release you, it's more important that you release yourself. You release, you release Whether that. they say anything or do anything. It's, it's inconsequential. Yeah, because I hear so many people say, Dr. Trim, they, they won't forgive me, they won't release me. Does that make a difference? Well, it, it really doesn't make a difference. You can see, because you have to allow God to be at work. This is what happened to Esau and Jacob. Esau was bent on killing his brother, and he, he made sure that his brother knew, after daddy dies, I'm going to kill you for what you did. 
Now, what, what, Jacob, what, what Jacob did was amazing. He went to God and he negotiated with God. And when God changed Jacob, when he met his brother, the change that went on in himself, his brother had to adjust in order to accommodate the change. So, you know, we have to be the change. We have to be the change. So if I change, everybody around me has to adjust to my change. To accommodate the change, you know. <laughs> they have to adjust. That, that's good. Yeah. And then, you know, we have to get we have to get over our bitterness as well. A lot of people are bitter because they're competing with someone or they feel someone owe, owes them something. It's like a spirit of entitlement. We've got to get over our bitterness. And this is a huge thing because we feel justified in being bitter. But I, I've discovered something about bitter. Bitterness, again, is, is like acid, pouring acid in your, in, in your body. And um, a lot of us are bitter towards people but we forget, just like people have betrayed us, that's another thing, getting over betrayal. People betray us, but we've betrayed people. So just like we want people to forgive us, we have to forgive people. People have hurt us, but we've hurt people. People have disappointed us, but we've disappointed people. And it takes a lot of um, living true to who you are and being honest with yourself and living authentically and not lying to yourself and justifying and looking for alibis is, is less about what's going on with people and it's more about what's going on with you. And many times when God challenges us, he's challenging us because he wants to prepare us for something bigger and greater. What, what, what I was about to say, and you, you walked right into it, everything you're saying is about a self-examination. Yeah. And, and we always, yeah, we always point the finger at everybody else. So what you're telling me, everything is really about looking at yourself. Yeah, and, 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 and being honest, we want scapegoats. We want, we want alibis as to why our lives don't work. And this is why our lives don't work. God has a place for you, a space for you. He has a race, a grace, and a pace. So find your place, occupy it, get your space, live there, and then use the grace to succeed there. And, you know, it, I, I think when it comes to even the whole aspect of healing, I believe healing starts with truth. Thou shalt know the truth, and the truth shall sh set you free. So there are people watching right now, and when I say let the healing begin, they have to start dealing with the truth. Yes. What truth is that? And that's the truth that comes through the word of God. The word yeah. of God is like a mirror. There's a difference between things that are true and things that are truth. The things that are truth align itself with the word of God. And anything could be true, but it doesn't have to be truth. And as long as we are rehearsing things that are true, yeah. we're going to be bound by those things. You've got to rehearse the things that are truth, the things that are in, word, in the word of God, and you'll be delivered and healed. You have another, clap your hands. You have another book. It's called Push. Preserve until success happens. Yeah, persevere. Persevere, I'm sorry. Persevere until... Success uh, happens. Yeah, until success happens. Through what? Through prayer. prayer. Through Both prayer. of these books yeah. end up in prayer. Yeah, the, I mean, you know, I believe that prayer is every believer's secret weapon. There is no place, no government, no circumstances, no situation, no city, no country, no person that is off limits to prayer. And we, under, we underestimate the power of prayer. And I believe the strongest weapon that a believer has is the power of prayer. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote a series of prayer books. Um, it was prayer that delivered me. It was prayer that healed me. It was prayer that gave me success, prayer that gave me prosperity. And, and so the Bible says pray without ceasing. And that's just a two-way conversation between you and God. And there comes a time in prayer where we have to stop and become silent so that we can hear the answers. There are so many people that are just talking, 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 and they get up from prayer, and they never listen to God. But God has solutions to every challenge and every problem. And if we just learn the art of listening long enough, we listen to so many things, and whatever you hear the most, you'll have faith in them. Wait, and wait, so wait. faith whatever you hear the most you'll have faith that's in what it. you have faith in. Yeah, faith comes by whatever hearing. You hear the most, you'll have faith in whatever that. Whatever you hear the most. 
Whatever you hear the most at Whatever home. Whatever you hear the most. At home, on your job. You will have faith in that. Faith comes by hearing. So, you know, whoever hey. has your ear controls your destiny. And so if you want your destiny to shift, then you got to press your ears to the lips, the mouth yeah. of God. Not to your enemy, not to the media. This is why we have a mediator. Our mediator is greater than the media. Change who has your ear. Whoever whether, has your ear social media, controls your destiny. Whoever, ha, whoever you listen to the most. L Bishop, look, the ear. No, you, you're messing me up. The ear is a part no, of you. And I, I ain't the only one messed up. They're trying to act cute. Well, they <laughs> the whoever ear has, has your, your ear, ear controls your rush. destiny. We got time. We're doing good. Whoever is speak, whether it be your mom and them. Whoever has your ear controls Whether it be your, your daddy and them. Walk with me. Whether it be your boss at your, your job. Your enemy, your demon-possessed supervisor, whoever Even some folk has, that's acting like they're your friends. Whoever, whoever has your ear yeah. Yeah. Controls, controls your destiny. Yeah. We need to switch who we're listening to. You got to switch who you've been listening yeah. to. Yeah. Who have you been listening to? And one of the and reasons what they why. Will do, wait a minute, I don't mean to mess up. <laughs> what they will do, what they will do, they'll change your whole outlook on what you really believe. I, I, you be you be believing stuff that I it, it, you my guess, you need, but they'll you, check, go ahead. I'm sorry. You need people in your life, yeah, that yeah. have the capacity, yeah, for your greatness and for your anointing. Yeah, you need people in oh, your my, life my that can speak to what you're pregnant with. Yeah, yeah. You need people in your life that have the ability to see what God oh, is shit. doing. Yeah, yeah. That's the type of people that you need in your life. Why? The ear is a part of the reproductive organ. Yeah. And, and we're going to the healing part. But most of us need healing in our minds. Yeah. Our yeah. minds. You know, because the ear because the ear is a part of your reproductive organ. It's yeah. a part of the reproductive organ of the spirit. Your spirit has a womb. And so the womb of your spirit is your mind. Everything is birthed out of mind. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. The heart is the second compartment of the mind. So the first area that we birth in is, is your mind because that's a part of your spirit. Let this mind be in you. We need to mind the things of the Lord. Yeah. Healing starts in the, most, most diseases, most diseases are sickness of, sickness of the mind. Yeah. We've heard of mind over, over matter before. But God, I believe, is healing the mind and releasing Hallelujah. us of stress, right now. of, 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 of suicide, his ahead. healing us, of doubt, of anxiety. There are so many people that cannot sleep, but I'm decreeing and declaring today that tonight you're going to have the best sleep ever. You are going to be careful for nothing, but everything by prayer and supplication. You're going to make your request known unto God. And the God of peace, what? that's it. We what? need peace. We need peace. And the other thing that God is going to do, he's going to give you the ability to dream again. He's going to give you visions. Dream he's going again. to give you dreams. Dreams, Dream why again. is that important? Because that will give you hope. And a lot of people have lost hope. And hope deferred makes the heart sick. And a lot of people are suffering because they've lost the ability to hope. But I'm decreeing that God is restoring your hope. He's restoring your faith. You're going to believe again. You're going to believe God. You're going to believe the word of the prophet. And God is going to restore you. Your son is going to be saved. Your son is going to be delivered. You are going to be delivered. You are going to receive healing. We are coming alongside of you tonight to believe God that your healing is going to begin tonight. You are going to go back to the doctor and the cancer is going to be gone. Your high blood pressure is going to be relayed, uh, regulated. You shall not die. God right now is giving you a reason why you should live. You got too much to live for. You're going to see a turnaround in your children's health. And there are so many people believing for their children to be healed, believing for their parents to be healed. But we are coming, hallelujah, alongside of you tonight. We are joining our faith with yours. And we decree, let the healing begin. Yes.
Tell three people, dream again. Touch them. Say, dream again. Dream again. Matter of fact, pick up your phone and call somebody and say, I'm dreaming again. Call the Word Network right now with that seed and say, I'm dreaming again. I believe again. I'm living again. I'm thinking, and I got to say it, and Jonathan's coming, and he's coming with the right song. There were people that counted me out because I had, I had left the Word Network. But I kept listening to people say, God's getting ready to bring you back around. Yeah. And I'm a living witness. Yeah. I'm a living witness. God will do. Yeah. Touch somebody and say, he'll do a do-over. Yeah. Look at somebody down your road. Say, everything on this road is about to get a do-over. I feel a do-over. Jump on your feet and say a do-over. He's giving you another chance. Push somebody and say dream again. I love you. I love you. Oh my God. Dr. Cindy, hey! Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, y'all sit down. Jonathan Nelson, don't touch that dial, Bishop Paul Morton. Y'all, y'all go... Uh, <laughs> shake somebody's hand right quick and say he's getting ready to give you a do-over pick up that phone right now 855-730-WORD so that 57 get that seed in the ground put your dream on that seed 855-730-WORD ooh Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel a do-over. I'm dreaming. Ooh. I believe Jonathan Nelson, Bishop Paul Morton up next. I think we ought to just stand on our feet and celebrate. Come on. Give your neighbor a high five and say, neighbor, it's time to dance. It's time to celebrate. We're just going to decree and declare what we've just heard. Faith comes by hearing, and we declare that we believe what the word says about us tonight. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I believe, I believe. Now, come on, everybody. I need y'all to move your feet and just dance a little bit. Oh, you. I trust. I trust. In you. In you. I believe. 
Somebody say bye-bye. Come on, you're going to wave at some things. Don't forget Jonathan Nelson's Fearless CD is coming out March 18th. Give it up. Y'all make sure y'all download. Download you some Jonathan Nelson. March 18th, Fearless is coming out. Let's support our bro. Let's support everybody that comes on the program. You see the CD cover right there. Make sure you support it. I want to thank God for those of you that have sold a seed of $100 or more. Uh, Joy, uh, Ann, Regina, Gloria, Robin, Keach, Crystal, and uh, Yama. Thank you for sowing the seed. Listen, you still have time to get that seed in the ground. We're going to pray. I'm going to ask the ministers. They're going to come with me. We're going to believe God for your release tonight. We're sowing the seed of $57 for your release tonight. As the man of God, my spiritual father comes and preaches the word tonight. Get your Bibles, but most of all, as the Lord is speaking to you, pick up that phone at 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. Put your hands together for the seed bearer of the word tonight, Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton. Come on, everybody. Oh, praise the name of the Lord in this place. Ah, sickness, pain, depression, say bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Ah, poverty, bye-bye, bye-bye. You may be seated. Listen, I'm just glad to be here. I'm telling you and those that are watching all over the world, let the healing begin. And that's what I just want to talk about for the next few moments from John 5, beginning at verse 4. And the Bible says, For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there with an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Now, I'm going to ask you a question tonight and all over the world and those that are in the studio tonight. Do you want to get well? I know the healing's going to begin, but, but you, 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 you got to want to get well. I don't want you to be like the man where, where the preacher called the man up to pray for him because his neck was in a brace and he looked like he was in all kind of pain. And the preacher said, you, I'm speaking healing tonight and you're going to get the healing. You better believe it's going to be done. And the man was at the altar and he was ready to lift his hand, but he called the pastor over and said, listen, not right now. My lawsuit is about to come through. Now I don't need healing. Not right now. You, you have to desire you have to desire healing. Yeah. Now, whenever Jesus was talking, his questions, if you know anything about Jesus, his questions were never impersonal. He always spoke directly to somebody or to a group of people. That's just the way Jesus was. He would never beat around the bush. You didn't have to guess. You knew who Jesus was talking to. For example, like his disciples, because people were walking away from Jesus, they were upset with Jesus, and, and Jesus looked at his disciples. Now, I know, I know you're supposed to be walking with me, and you're supposed to be working with me, but Jesus looked at them and said, will ye also go? I'm sure one of the disciples probably said, who, Jesus? I'm talking to you. You, you going to go? He always directed his questions to somebody. There was a man with the demon in him. And you know what Jesus asked. What is your name? Whose name? What is your name? Jesus wasn't scared of nobody. He would always direct his question to somebody. What think ye of Christ? His statements were always directed to somebody. Now to this man at the pool do you want to get well do you want to be made whole do you want to get well do you want to be healed he singled him out of all the people that were 
down at the pool. He singled him out. But let me tell you something about Jesus. I'm glad he does it that way. He does not get me confused with anybody. He doesn't get you confused with anybody. He knows who you are and he knows what your need is. He just, he just needs to know, do you want to get well? You know, tonight I see our world in this situation and I think that we'll all agree that our world is sick. It's sick. Gathered around a pool just waiting for something to happen you got some people they're around the pool they're waiting they're waiting for luck you got some people they're waiting for chance there's some people they're waiting for an inheritance question is what you looking for I don't know about you I am waiting on Jesus because I know he's a healer Whatever situation I'm dealing with in my life, I realize that he is able and he's walking around even in this studio tonight and those that are watching all over the world, he's asking, do you want to get well? All right. And all you have to say is, yes, Lord. Lord. Don't try to argue with him in the flesh. I mean, here's Jesus. I mean, this this is Jesus. He's asking this man at the pool, do you want to get well? I would have just said yes. I mean, I've been at this pool for 38 years and Jesus is passing by the pool. I would have just said yes, but here's this man. He's, he's, he's answering Jesus back. Jesus is saying, do you want to get well? Look at this man. This man said, well, there's nobody to put me in the pool. I want to get well, but there's nobody to put me in the pool. And what a shame it was because it seemed like out of 38 years, somebody would have put him in the pool. But how many of you know people are selfish? All they want is for them. They're not concerned about nobody else. All they want is for them. And here's this man. He's been at the pool for 38 years. So his excuse is now there's nobody to put me in the pool. But I could hear Jesus say, I didn't ask you that. I asked you, do you want to get well? Then the man, here he comes again. Here he comes again. Jesus is asking, do you want to get well? The man comes again and he says, well, when I go into the pool, somebody always steps in before me. Could I tell you something? It doesn't matter who's first. It doesn't matter who's second. All I know, if Jesus is saying that he's in the blessing business, just don't pass me by. Because I am here to tell you tonight, the healing is going to begin when I realize all I got to do is listen to Jesus. You see, if you would have been, if you would have been in Jerusalem that day, you would have saw a lot of sick people, a lot of disturbed people, a lot of depressed people. But the one good thing about this was Jesus was there. You ain't got to look at your situation. Just just look around and see if, if Jesus is there. If Jesus is there, he is able to work out my situation and I got to trust him and know that he will. This world is sick right now, but Jesus is here. Don't you let this world get you depressed. Don't you let this world get you down. I think somebody ought to praise him tonight because Jesus is here. And as long as Jesus is here, I know that the healing will begin. Uh, This man had lost hope. Dr. Trim told you tonight, don't don't lose hope. Whatever you do, don't lose hope. But Jesus came through. He came through asking, do you want to get well? Do you want to get? Well, you see, Jesus has problems with 
us. Because we forget about the power in his hands. How long are you going to be around Jesus and don't realize the power that he has in his hands? Like this man, Jesus told him now, take up your bed and walk. Take up your bed and walk. But, but can't you hear this man tonight? He's speaking back to Jesus now. But Lord, apparently you don't understand. I have been stumbling around this pool for 38 years. Take up my bed and walk. Do you really know how long I've been here? Take up my bed and walk. Could I tell you, Jesus, because I've just been around here. I've been around here, so I've had time. I've had time, you know. When you got time, you can add up some numbers. I could hear this man. He probably said, I've tried 14,000 times to get into this Ooh, but Jesus said, I told you to take up your bed and walk, but you don't understand. Let me break it down for you. In months, Jesus, I have tried for 456 months my, 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 my. to get into the pool. Take up your bed and walk. Well, maybe I need to break it down for you a little bit more. Jesus, I have tried for 1,976 weeks. Ain't nothing happened. I'll break it down for you a little bit more, Jesus. I have tried for 13,870 days. Ain't nothing happened. Ah, oh, but what this man didn't understand, I don't care how many months you've been here. I don't care how many years you've been here. I don't care how many days you've been here. I'm here now. And I come to speak to somebody tonight to let you know he's right where you are right now. Stop looking at your past. Stop looking at what you've been through in your past. I command you in the name of Jesus to take up your bed and walk because something is about to happen in his life. I'm going to tell you one more thing. I'm going to let you go in a moment, but let me tell you this. Sit down, sit down, sit down a moment. He was so busy. Look at this man now. He was so busy looking at the water. He was about to miss Jesus. <laughs> Maybe I better say that again, because some of y'all, I don't know what you're looking at. I don't know what... But you better be careful what you're looking at because you can miss Jesus. He was so busy looking at the crowd who was beating him in the pool and who was stepping in before him and who wasn't going to help him. He was so busy looking at the crowd, he was about to miss Jesus. And that's the problem with some of you right now. You're so busy looking at the crowd and you want to please the crowd. You're so busy trying to make sure that the crowd is in agreement with you. I don't need a crowd when I got Jesus. Because as long as I got Jesus, I realize in my life that I'm coming out of this situation. He was so busy looking at his situation that he was about to miss Jesus. Tonight, I command you in the name of Jesus, get over your situation. Stop crying over your situation. Stop worrying about your situation. Stop getting depressed over your situation. God is a about to bring some healing into your life. You are about to experience it in your life. And I'm here to tell you that God is able to do it for you. I dare you, just touch somebody. Tell them, let the healing begin. Let, let the healing begin. What are you looking at? The songwriter took the print and the songwriter wrote, is there anyone who has affliction on your body? 
is racked with pain. <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. And the load seems hard to carry. And your strength you just can't regain. When affliction oppresses the soul and the waves of trouble roll when you need somebody to help you he's the one and the songwriter came back and said yes there's one yes there's one the only one the blessed blessed Jesus he is the one take him with you Take him with you. Won't he make a way somehow? Yeah, he will. Let the healing begin. Let the healing begin. I speak it tonight. Healing is taking place. Satan, you get your hands off of God's people tonight. I want to get well. Speak it in your life. I'm ready to jump in. I'm ready to take up my bed and walk. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Stand on your feet. Touch somebody. Tell them I'm ready. Touch seven people and tell them I'm ready. I'm ready. So don't wait till the battle's over. Shout now. Clap now. Look at your neighbors. I'm ready. I'm ready. Hey. Stepping in them, come. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands and worship him right now. Lift your hands right now and worship him right now. Lift your hands and worship him. Lift your voice. Let me hear the strings. Lift your hands right now and worship him. Come on, lift your hands and worship him in this place. Come on, come on, come on. So, Father, I decree and declare. Dr. Takeda, if you just come around. I decree and declare right now your healing power. 855-730-WORD. Dial the number now. He's touching lower back pains. Come on, stretch your hands now. So, Father, we decree and declare the healing. We come against depression now. We come against every infirmity now. We plead the blood. Come on, I need somebody to open your mouth. With his stripes, we are healed. Come on, come on. With his stripes, we are healed. We are healed. We are healed. We are healed. Pastor David Johnson, come with me. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Come on. Come on, Steph. Sing the song of the Lord. Come on. I need a, I need a sound in this place. God is touching you right now. Stretch your hands, everybody, and worship Let him. Begin in me. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Let it begin in me. Do you want to be made whole? Let it begin I speak to every infirmity now. Oh, Somebody is suffering with the blood flow right now. God is touching your limbs right now. The blood, the blood is flowing now. The blood is flowing. The blood is flowing. You've been having problems with circulation. God is touching you right now. Somebody can come get this. Come get this. Somebody come get this. God is touching now. There's a flow. You've been having problems. There's a woman now that's watching right now. Lift your hands, everybody. You've been having a problem with your blood, your circulation. God is touching you right now. Somebody, you've been suffering with migraine headaches. God is healing you right now. I speak to migraine headaches right now. He's taking away stress right now. I speak right now. Somebody's been having problems in your stomach. Lift your hands, everybody. God is healing your stomach right now. There's been, there's been like it's an acid feeling. God is touching your stomach right now. 
Pick up the phone right now. If I'm talking to you, pick up the phone right now. 855-730-WORD. Get your name in. We got about 10 minutes. Get your name in. I want to lay hands. I want to believe God for your healing right now. Stretch your hands up right now. Let it start right now. Let it begin. Let it begin. Let it begin. Come on, lift your hands. Right there, right there in your home right now. God is touching you right now. Woman, get out of that bed right now. Begin to exercise. Begin to exercise what you couldn't do. Begin to move like you couldn't move. The power of God is hitting that room right now. Come on, come on. Let it begin. Somebody you've been having, you haven't been able to move your, your, your neck. Begin, begin to move right now. He's freeing the healing. There's a warmth in your room right now. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. We're not, we're not entertaining. Everybody just lift your hands right now. Begin to pray in the spirit. If you can't pray in the spirit, pray and understand it. Somebody, you're having problems with your neck. God is touching it right now. God is touching it right now. It's beginning right now. Some were healed immediately, but some were healed on the way. God is healing you on the way. God is healing you on the way. Get up and move. Get up and move. Get up and move. Get up and move right now. Begin. Get up and move. Get up and move now. Get up and move now. Up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. supernatural turnaround is about to happen in your life. Bishop Davis, I heard the Lord say, tell those that are watching tonight that a post-famine miracle was about to take place. God is about to give you a 2 Kings chapter number 8 miracle restoration. The Bible says that there were seven years of famine. And after the end of seven years, a woman left the land of the Philistines. And the Bible says that she went before the king and she cried out. And at the same time she got there, the man of God was already talking to the king about the woman. And God told me to tell you that your name has come before his presence. Your name is on God's divine agenda. And the woman walked in at that time because it was her time. And the Bible said that the king said, restore unto this woman everything that she lost. Go back seven years and give this woman back pay for everything that she lost. And God told me to tell you that a supernatural turnaround is about to happen. That's why you got to sow the $57 seed. Because the Lord says, I'm going back seven years in your life. And I'm about to restore the years that the canker worm, the locust, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar is eating. You got to pick up the phone. 
You can't afford to miss this moment. Get on the phone now and release. There is a release. What's oh. been tied up is being released. What's release. been backed up is being released. Oh. What's been held up is being released. God is about to give you your stuff back. God is about to give you your land back. You've lost houses. Oh. You've lost land. Pick up the phone now. Don't miss it. Don't miss this moment. That woman stepped into her moment as you saw that 50. Seven dollar seed, you're gonna step into a moment. Your life will never be the same. You are about to get it all back, and you're getting ready to bounce back. You've been in seven years of famine, but I got a word for you the famine is over. The famine is over. The famine is over. Famine is over. This is your season of release. Pick up the phone. Just give confirmation with it. I told you about the man. He was arguing. But when he listened to Jesus, when he received the word, listen to verse 9. It says, and immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked on the same day. Look at somebody say, immediately release now. Now, 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 release, release even that seed right now, God's doing it, pick up that man, pick up that man, pick up that man, lift your hand and say, pick up the phone right now, 855-730 word, sow that seed right now, God is moving across this country, he's moving across this world, he's flowing in your home, he's flowing in your job, wherever you are, you got five minutes, move to that phone right now, come on, lift your hands, release your power and let it start right now, come on Jonathan, help him. you to pray lift your hands pray for healing now sir father in the name of the lord jesus we thank you right now 
that healing is happening for your people right now. We stand in expectancy because we know that the atmosphere of expectancy is the breeding ground for miracles. So we decree it to be done right now in the name of Jesus. God, I thank you right now that cancer is being removed out of your people's bodies. God, I thank you right now that no sickness shall overtake us in the name of Jesus. Every weapon that is formed against your people is being canceled right now in the spirit realm. Lift your hands, people of God, in the name of Jesus. God, I decree and I declare that your people shall prosper. Your people shall overcome. And we thank you for healing because we know it's happening even right now. Somebody lift your hands right there and just shout right now. Come on, decree it and declare it. Shout right now. Wherever you are, just lay your hand on yourself and say it's happening right now. Lift your hands, everybody in this place. We're about to leave you. Just lift your hands. I decree the blessing of the Lord upon you. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. Lift your hands. You're blessed when you come. You're blessed when you go. God is about to blow your mind in the next seven days. Then sing my song, my Savior God, to thee. How great. Come on, everybody, as we leave. How great thou, thou art. Come on. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee. How great, everybody. How great. our original programs please call our prayer partners and sow a seed of twenty dollars don't just watch the word receive a dvd and spread the word 